Hello, and this is chapter 2. In previous chapter, we had a look on the robot software platform, and we thought about the reason why should we use it. From this chapter, we are going to deal with one of the robot software platform, the ROS, Robot Operating System. ROS has the largest number of users, and the largest number of supported sensors and robots. We are going to see what is ROS by picking some special concepts. So let's start seeing from what is ROS. This description is written on the ROS wiki. It says, ROS is an open source. As you saw in the previous chapter, there were many named companies that were fascinated by ROS open source. ROS is a meta operating system for your robot. This says it is like an operating system but not an operating system. ROS is not the same like Windows or Linux, but it runs some kind of Linux. We should make sure about this. After the paragraph, it talks about key functions of the ROS, but we will look into it after this chapter. ROS is a software framework. It is made of with main nodes, which will play a specific role in robot system. The developers can divide their work, make the nodes in a specialized field. ROS gives many tools that you will need during the development. There are Arvis, RQT, Gazebo, the 3D simulator. And various functions is supported by ROS, related to modeling, sensing, recognition, navigation, and meditation. But you should know that ROS has been developed by many opinions and contributions from the people in the community. The Open Robotics, which is an organization that made, maintains the ROS, helped the ROS to be like this. So the ROS aims to build an ecosystem that enables global collaboration on robotics software development. In the following chapters, you can catch the reason why the ecosystem is so much emphasized ROS is different with the traditional operating system, like Windows and Linux? Yes, it is meta operating system. We can describe the meta operating system as follows. The meta operating system is not a traditional operating system, like Windows, Linux, and Android. But it runs on those traditional operating systems, like middleware. And it provides essential functions for developing robot applications. If you can understand what essential functions are, just think of it as a toolbox. ROS provides various tools for developing robot application. You can use its tools for handling the error, monitoring the data of connected devices like motors and sensors. After the development, you can make it as ROS package and release to the server. Or you can use a package distributed by someone and make your package much better. In this process, the ecosystem can be created. This is a map of what we have talked about. ROS provides many utilities, tools, so what you should do is just focusing on making robot application, that's all. But we can ask, why should the ROS run on the traditional operating system? There are some reasons, but this is very core point when ROS runs on the OS. This enables the communication between different type of device or operating systems. Let's suppose that you have a smartphone running the Android, and you have a robot which has a camera. The robot runs in Linux, and you are going to see the robot's camera view through your smartphone then the problem seems not simple to be solved. But if ROS runs on each operating system, and ROS can communicate with the ROS on the other side, this can happen in ROS actually, and this is why the ROS is made as meta operating system. Then what kind of operating system can we use to run the ROS? Technically, you can use ROS not only on the Ubuntu Linux, but also on the OS X, Windows, or something else. But there are some functional limitations in some operating system because it was made as a cross-platform program. 
And one special thing is, Raw supports even the microcomputer in it. Practically, it doesn't have an OS, but it was made to have communication with a computer via serial communication, Bluetooth, or LANs. And as the ROS on Ubuntu Linux works very well, I recommend you use Ubuntu Linux. But in ROS 2.0, they said three major operating system, the Windows and OS X2, will support ROS Perfect. So let's look forward to test it. The ROS configurations are the following. As you can see in the client layer, ROS supports various languages. There are some robotics applications that will boost your robot development. And for the others, robotics application framework for controlling various types of data from sensors and communication layer, hardware interface layer, software development tools, we will see this later, and the simulation. So you don't need to make the extra tools by yourself, just do what you have to do. In the ROS ecosystem, in hardware-wise, over 90 kinds of robots, over 80 kinds of sensors are registered in ROS community. When you think about the smartphone, there are many models from many companies, and the companies have much of choices for selecting the sensors to build up a phone. But as you know, the robot needs more kinds of sensors, for example, and have much more kinds of shape and functions. And here is ROS, there are lots of tools, functions. This is what we saw in the previous. And, and in application-wise, there are over 5,000 ROS packages in the world. And among them, about 3,000 packages are released as ROS official. Over 100,000 downloads was recorded. 7,000 wiki pages being maintained. No, we can't find this thing from any other robot software platform. So this is ROS, and from now, we are going to see the features of the ROS. The first is a communication infrastructure between the nodes. When you took some images using a camera, and you are going to send the image to another device, now we can guess, the communication between those should be available. And for the communication, those two should have same understandable communication protocol. ROS has a protocol as well for the communication between the nodes. That's called message. The sender encapsulates the data as a message defines, and the receiver extracts it under how the message defines. As the data is available for any nodes that wants to communicate, multiple nodes can receive the same data from the node. Besides, there is a special node that can record those data or play the recorded data. In here, you can record all data flown during robot experimentation and play the data for further tests. Thus, you don't need to run the robot many times for your work. And, as the communication became available, if the nodes know the same message format, you can make the nodes with whatever. Then even the nodes can be programmed by different programming languages. In the other words, you don't need to learn other languages to use other nodes programmed in different languages. Distributed parameter system enables modifying the parameter value even when the program is running. We'll see this later. The second feature is related with the functionality. There are some standard messages for the data came from specific sensors. The camera, the IEM sensor, or the laser, for example, is very common sensors, so this should be an easy to replace. To do this, the messages for the sensors should be standardized. There are TF. The transform is much used for describing the pose of the robot especially the joints or sensors on 3D space. The physical characteristics of the robot will be described in XML format. The diagnostic system will show the robot status like a battery. 
sensor drivers, libraries, and recognition algorithms as well. And here we have two key functions, the navigation and meditation. Navigation is a function that brings the robot from a site to a specific site on desired path. And the manipulation is needed for like pick and place with arm shaped robot. The third is the ROS tools. ROS is basically run under terminal. You can run everything that is related with ROS. The next is the graphic tool, the Arvis. This mainly works for data visualization. It shows the pose of the robot or the sensor data. RQT is a QT based ROS framework and there are some nodes run on the RQT environment. This can show the data in simplest way. Gazebo is a well-made virtual reality workspace. It runs with physics engine, so if you don't have a real robot, you can put the robot's model on the workspace and run the robot. Next is how to select the ROS version. This ROS tutorial comments actually the ROS can came in installed in Ubuntu 16.04, but here shows how to select the ROS version for upcoming updates. New ROS has been released every year, but the ROS of long-time service is released in every two years. This is because the Ubuntu of long-time services is upgraded in every two years. I personally recommend you to use the latest LTS ROS, but just use it when 4 months is passed after the release, if you don't want to spend a lot of time for debugging. 